These are the days where I do not like to report on the news because the things that we're going to talk about today are not very positive, especially with what's going on with the SEC as they're really bringing some maximum pain. And when we talk about the issues that the SEC brought against these different influencers and companies and everything else, I want you to think about the far-reaching implications that it has to do with in crypto, blockchain gaming, and Web3 in general. And then you can understand why America is really done with crypto. So first things first, let's take a look. So today, there was a nice little tweet. I always find it interesting that uh, the SEC likes to tweet out, like, you know, they have nothing else to do. But uh, this is a tweet today. He said, today we charged Impact Theory LLC, a media and entertainment company headquartered in L LA, with conducting an unregistered offering of crypto asset securities in the form of NFTs. Let me say that again. Crypto asset securities in the form of NFTs. Impact Theory raised 30 million from hundreds of investors. And then it goes and talks about with, without registration, investors of all types are deprived of the, of the protections of afforded them by the robust disclosures and other safeguards long provided by securities laws. Look, I'm not going to get into the fact that, you know, these disclosures and other safeguards really protect people because I'm sure they do. But you know what didn't protect anybody was FTX, Voyager, Celsius, BlockFi, when you had the opportunity and sat down with, with SBF. I find that very odd. But it is what it is. And when the SEC brings charges... And of course, they've already settled. Uh, Impact Theory has settled with them. They agreed to pay, I think it was $6 million. Correct me in the comments section. And Impact Theory, as far as I've taken a look at, correct me in the comments section, but Impact Theory, LLC, uh, they're a media company out of LA. And this is with uh, Tom Bilyeu. I think I always, I always say his name wrong. Great guy, great channel, a lot of information. But they just did NFTs and they sold it off. And now they're saying that this is in unregistered security. Now, I'm sure that they probably tried to go to the SEC, or maybe they didn't, I don't know. But the same thing has been happening with Binance, with Coinbase, with everybody that you can pretty much think of, with Ripple, as they've gone to talk with the SEC and sat down with them, and it's impossible to register with them because they just keep saying, they don't give them the actual information they need to actually register perfectly or at all. And then, of course, we have this issue. So now if you think about NFTs, think about NFTs. Think about that in general. If the SEC is going to crack down on NFTs and they're going to say this is definitely a security, what does that mean for everything that we try to put on the blockchain as far as NFTs? That could go from something as, as massive as real estate as we try to uh, securitize things and actually put the different properties onto the blockchain via an NFT. So those businesses are just gone. Now think about what I think is gonna lead the next bull run, Web3 gaming, or as I call it, block gaming. A lot of those games have to do with NFTs. So if NFTs are all securities, that means that every single game out there that uses NFTs are going to have to go and register with the SEC if they want to play ball in America. And the thing is, a lot of these companies are gonna to say to themselves, why the heck are we dealing with Americans when I try to go over there and I try to register with the SEC and I cannot do these things, I am hindering my business. I cannot grow anything. This is not the land of opportunity. This is the land of persecution. And I'm not going to be able to go through this whole process. And I'm actually dwindling and I'm dying on the vine. By saying that, crypto and digital assets are now dead in America. There is no reason for a company to launch here in America whatsoever and they're going to go away. Ourselves, we're launching a product ourselves. It is a blockchain game. Web3, we're going to launch on Web2 first. But every lawyer that we've talked to so far has said, you will not launch in America. And we were hemming and hawing, going, ah, well, maybe get around some things. But there is not a chance. There's not a, cho a snowball's chance in hell we will ever do anything in America as long as Gary Gens on the SEC is cracking down and does not give a clear pathway. Having said that, don't worry, I'll get to some good news. I'm not all doom and gloom. <laughs> uh, so. Then there's this. This is from Andrew, um, founder of X3, 
pretty good uh, 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 Twitter account. I'll link it in the description. But he says, update. It shouldn't come as a surprise that the SEC, SEC staff have their sights set on a collection of crypto influencers. And this is from the source. I don't know who the source is, but whatever. If they created a token and benefited in a meaningful way, expect there to be consequences. Same thing with NFTs, I believe. If there is, are influencers out there that created NFT, think about all the ones that have done this. Think about all the companies that have done this. Think of all the individual people that have done this. How many of those people are now in the sites of the SEC? A lot of them. Same source, low-hanging fruit that's easy to track and prosecute. Now, you can let your imagination run wild with all the people that have actually done this, but I gotta tell you, if they're gonna come after NFTs, that's everybody. Now, fortunately, I didn't get into that craze. I did drop a coin called Tomato Coin. I don't know if anybody remembers that. It was a joke, and it was free. So I think I'm on the clear on this one. But it is quite concerning, taking a look at, uh, at what's happening. And then also, this was from, well, this was from Allcoin Daily. Great channel, check them out. And uh, they say, the SEC versus Richard Hart case is set for November 28, 2023. And then there was a correction. Corey Coast's, Corey Coast's crypto coin says it's a conference call, not a case. This is from uh, Hex and Pulse Chain and things like that. And he says, no, 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 it's just a conference call. I don't, <laughs> I gotta tell you, I don't care if it's a conference call or, or what, but uh, uh, the wheels of justice do move slow. And I'm not saying that uh, Richard Hart here is guilty. I'm just saying, if you're getting a call from the SEC, it's usually not a good thing moving forward. So that is what's going on. And again, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but when I see something like this happen, the only way a, through, a, there, is no, there is no around this. The only way through this is to do exactly what Ripple did. And this is something I, I called for, gosh, over a year ago. And I said, the SEC will never let up. Never. It is, it is the understanding that they will just keep pushing forward. And the only way to go through with this is to sue the SEC. People say, that's ridiculous. Why would anybody do that? I don't know. So here we go. They're just going to pick us off. I think it was Benjamin Franklin that said, we should either hang together or we'll all hang separately. Meaning there's power in numbers. And the SEC, even though they lost that case partially with Ripple, they're still making waves. And we'll see how it all works out. But I, I got to tell you, the only way through this is a long difficult process in the courts in America while the entire crypto industry goes off site, offshore, which as well they should, especially with the Asian countries as they embrace crypto, India and all the different places, parts of Europe, Switzerland. When all this happens, we're going to be stuck in these court cases against the SEC. It's going to cost tens of millions of dollars. People are going to lose a good amount of money because Gary is protecting us harder. And unfortunately, there's only one way to do that, and that is through the SEC. Let me just think about that in the comments section. It's not all bad news. Hey, there is some good stuff. How would you like a tangent wallet? <laughs> so I, uh, on Twitter, oh, shoot, you know what? I didn't do this. Uh, follow me on Twitter, at News Asset. And uh, we did a deep dive into the tangent wallet. I think it's pretty good. I, I like it so far. Um, and uh, it's not a sponsored post. They didn't pay me anything or anything like that. I just picked up a, a, a Tangent wallet because I was concerned about my Nano Ledger wallet. I think we all are in, in one way, shape, or another, right? So I just thought, well, if I diverse them in my portfolio, I might as well diverse my cold storage devices. And it's super simple. So I'm just going to give away a couple of uh, wallets. Just follow me on uh, Twitter. Comment, retweet a post, follow Tangem and me, and then I'm gonna, we're going to do uh, the drawing uh, live stream on Thursday. I said September 31st because I'm an idiot. Uh, it's actually August 31st. That'll be the, the Thursday. So there is a little good news. And then also, I just want to start a uh, little education part here. And I want to get everybody's feedback. But I tweeted this out, and I just asked, the, the question was, would you consider this a good example of good tokenomics? of something positive that you would get into. So this is tokenomics. If you go to coingecko.com, there's a little tab of it you can click on which says tokenomics. You can find most of this stuff. But I just want to ask the question, like people, do you know tokenomics? Does it make sense to you? 
So look at this one. This is an allocation. If you had a crowd sale, meaning that it is public, and 83.3% is available to the public, but 16.7% goes to the foundation and early contributors, would you consider this good tokenomics? And then here's the unlock schedule or supply schedule. And you can see that this one, I'm not gonna tell you what it is, but it started in 2015 and it's already unlocked as of 2022. The total is 120 million tokens, that's important, but it can go up to infinity. So would you consider this a good example of good tokenomics? I'm not gonna tell you who it is or what it is. I'll talk about that in tomorrow's video, but uh, just put that in the comment section. Let me know what you think. And then lastly, <laughs> Lastly, lastly, I am obsessed with this tool that Ben's got at End of the Cryptoverse. And it's, uh, it's the DCA tool because, so we had Jerry on, Jerry V. Hall, not Mick Jagger's girlfriend, Jerry Hall, on the show yesterday. We did another live stream. And usually I don't do live streams during the day. I just thought this was gonna be a lot of questions. We'll get to those in a bit. But it was Aristotle or Plato, and he asked the question, he said, hey, Rob, why do you guys talk about you know, putting so much money in when a lot of us are you know, living paycheck to paycheck? It's kind of uh, disrespectful. Well, he didn't say disrespectful, but he said it's, you know, it's kind of like you really aren't taking into account all your, your subscribers, and I thought, yeah, it's pretty true. And I showed him the DCA tool, and I said, you know, like when I got out of the military, I mean, there was, I mean, for like six months or so, I was uh, working at UPS at the airport and I was making $10.50 an hour. I thought I was balling. And, but I realized pretty quickly that, uh, you know, the apartment, crappy apartment I lived in, and then of course food and then insurance and car and gas and everything else, it really adds up. So it's not, you don't have much to invest. So I said, you know, Aristotle or Plato, I understand. So I showed him just this, this example. And I said, look, this is, this is Cardano. And I said, Let's just say you've, you're gonna, and this is of course the past. It doesn't mean this is gonna be the exact same thing going forward. However, if you believe in Cardano and a different ecosystem, then the, maybe this is a play for you. Not a financial advice, not your dad, all that good stuff. But I showed him, I go, look, if you're going, let's say Cardano, you put 20 bucks a day. Whoa, that's not right. Let's go 20 bucks a week. That's what I showed him, yeah. 20 bucks a day might be steep for some people, I get it. Let's just say 20 bucks a week. If you did that and you started on December 14, 20, because that's as far back as, as this one goes for Ben on, on the site. And I said, if you did that, so first of all, there's two ways to look at it. There's this thing called lump sum. If you had 1100 bucks, because if you did, if you went and invested 20 bucks a week from 2018 to 2020, the total investment would be $1,100. If you take $1,100 and you lump sum it, and dollar cost average from 2018 to 2021, three years doing that, this is what you'd have in Cardano. And if you would have sold the top, good luck, I can't do it, but maybe you can. But your lump sum would have been worth $99,000. But if you would have had 1100 bucks back then, but if you don't and you live in paycheck to paycheck, I get it. But if you dollar cost average, you would have had $64,000. And I was like, that's pretty good, quite honestly depending on what Gary says, if it's a security, but whatever. And then of course, if you didn't do so hot, maybe you got it down here. Maybe you sold on October, 2021. Well, it's still like, you still put in 1100 bucks and you stopped on 2020. That's $48,000 for a, for a dollar cost averaging, or if you lump sum 74,000. And now I thought about it even further. I go, well, okay, let's do this. Let's take a look at Bitcoin. Ah, damn, I did it again. Not daily. Let's do Bitcoin 20 bucks a week. Because it's, you know, Cardano, back then it was pretty risky. Back then, now I think it's not as risky, but some people will disagree with me, whatever. That's what makes the channel great. But let's say that I did the same thing in January 1st, 2018, when Bitcoin was coming off its highs. Remember, on January 1st, 2018, the price was 14,000. Next week, it was almost 17,000. And back then, in 2017, December, I think the high was like $19,900, something like that. So let's say you did this again. You put 20 bucks a week into Bitcoin, and, but you stopped on in January 1st, 2020. That's $2,100 you would have put in over that whole time. If, if you could have lump summed it, you've been doing pretty good actually. 
in November, you would have put, you would have had $20,000. Is, which is crazy because it's that's the dollar cost average. If you lump summed it back to here, you actually would have had half of that. So now people and like if this, I want you guys to sign up and play around with this tool so you know what I'm talking about. I'm not, and you can see and you can you can use a bunch of different assets. I mean all these assets, all these assets, and see what it is, and come away with a conclusion what's best for you. And I took it even further. I said, okay, how about this? Let's say I lump summed it, again, $2,100, roughly. And I started it because we're all talking about the four-year cycles, right? Four-year cycles, everybody talks about it. I believe in them, too. So there's a theory that if we have the four-year cycles, we're coming up into the Bitcoin halving year, which is next year, 2024, right? So the last Bitcoin halving year was back in 2020. Actually, it was uh, May 12th, I think it was. Now we're coming on like April 17th or somewhere around there. So let's say that you lump summed it. Let's say you saved all this time. You're gonna lump sum and you would have done it in the last halving year. What would that have looked like? What would your gains would have been? Well, if you would have lump summed over here on January 1st, 2020, the last Bitcoin halving year, and if you would have had it, you would have topped out at eh, $19,000. That's not bad. I mean, doing like, you know, like 10 X just for hanging around for not even a, what is it, a year and a half. It's pretty good, quite honestly. But then I thought about this because that's not the most opportune time, January 1st, 2020. Let's take a look at the last cycles. The, the last cycle low, I don't know if, if, if we're in the low right now, but the last cycle low, did you know it was, it was an 84% drop? It's always happened this way. November 2013 was the high, $1,100. And the cycle low was January 2015. It was an 85% drop. The next cycle, 2017, the high was 19,665. The low was 3,200 on 2018. It was an 84% drop. That's why I still think we have ways to go because the lowest that we've gone so far is 77%. I could be wrong, but it's, it's, it's happened the last eight years. One of the last... So going forward, but let's just say this, let's take the most opportune time and lump sum on the lowest point that we could have gotten in the last eight years or something like that. Six years, five years, genius. Five, six years, $3,200. That was the cost of Bitcoin. So let's come over here and let's say we put 20 bucks a week and we started on December 16, 2018. That would have been $1,100 if we would have bought for 55 weeks, just 20 bucks a week, right? We could have lump summed if we had 1,100 bucks back in December 17, 2018, when there was the all-time low, $3,200. What would you have gotten? Well, your lump sum would have been 22,000, but your dollar cost average would have been 11,861, roughly half roughly half, but that's the perfect time to lump sum. Can you hit that every time? I don't know if you can, I'm not that good. So let's just take an, let's just do this instead of starting. So that's what we got, right? But what if we would have screwed up and we said, you know what? I'm gonna lump sum on November. Guess what? If you missed that perfect down point, your lump sum is worth 12,530, your DCA is worth 13,537. 13, Let's not cherry pick, let's go back another month. October, roughly the same thing. Let's go back another month. I don't know, September 1st, how are we doing? Dollar cost average does beat the lump sum. Let's go back one more month. You see where I'm going with this, right? You'll never know where it is. Lump sum could work out pretty well, but I'm just telling you that as time goes on, there are gains to be made, but it's up to you to decide what you wanna do and what's best for you and your family. So let me know in the comment section what you think about that. Me personally, I just do dynamic DCA where time in the risk bands and I just kind of, I, doubt, I buy the same stuff every day. So it doesn't really matter to me. I increase or decrease just a little bit. Right now I'm, we're stuck right around here. So it's like the same thing every day, which is boring. But I mean, I think I'll be handsomely rewarded in 2024, 2025, or 2026, who knows? 
And then lastly, if you're looking for that tool, did you know that it is free to use that tool I just showed you? There's a link in the description, into the Cryptoverse. This light plan right here, you just scroll down and you subscribe. And you can use the dollar cost averaging tool. It's fun. You can see like where things are and do all that stuff, right? And see what it could potentially be. It's fun for me because I'm a nerd and I like to do stuff like that. But if you want to subscribe and get all the cool stuff, I mean, it's there for you and there's a sale going on right now. Plus you get 10% off the first month if you want to and go from there. So that is, and then to finish up before we get into the, to the QA, I just want to tell you how crazy I think this, this, this is right here. And the reason why I think it's crazy is because they're doing one wallet. So there was a big speculation about this wallet number three. And of course, we talked about this like a couple of weeks ago, I think it was, where everybody thought it was BlackRock. I didn't want to cover it because I was like, I don't really know if that's true. And then it turned out to be Robinhood. Great. So Robinhood now has the third largest Bitcoin wallet with over three billion in Bitcoin. And you can see it right here. If you go to bitinfocharts.com and you click on the Bitcoin rich list, it'll show you Bitcoin address one, two. Let's, I'll show you. It'll show you Bitcoin address one, two, three. And the first one is Binance, the second one is Bitfinex, and the third one is apparently Robinhood. And you can see all this, what they've done. They got over $3 billion. And what they did, what Robinhood did was they, they had a bunch of different wallets and they said, ah, whatever, throw it into one wallet. I gotta tell you, like, does anybody feel like that's a kind of crazy if you just do like one wallet? Like me personally, I have three nano ledgers and now I just got the uh, Tangem and there's three, there's three cards there. Like, I'm just, I'm like, one wallet for three billion? I mean, I guess if you have your seed phrase or you have a backups for the cards, I guess so. But I find it just fascinating that, that uh, you know, people around here are like, you know what? Throw in a wallet, three billion, whatever. And that's it. So everybody, uh, that's it for today. I'm sorry it wasn't better news about what's going on, especially with uh, all the NFTs and the things that I think that America's done with crypto because of one guy and his belief of what's going on. But that's what we got today. So look, uh, if you got to take off, take off. Thanks for showing up. I appreciate you. If you like today's video, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing. Everything was very time sensitive, especially moving into the Bitcoin having in April.